Hello, we're here for More Happier, a podcast where we get more happier. Elizabeth, hello. Hey, Gretch. Today we'll talk about why Kansas City makes us happier, and Elizabeth wants to talk about shoes. Um, but first, <laughs> Elizabeth, uh, what is something making you more happier? Well, Gretch, I think something making both of us more happier is our trip to Kansas City. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you and I, just this weekend, I got home last night, we're in Kansas City, seeing our parents, stayed at the, um, their apartment, and as always, it was so good to be home. Yeah, absolutely. And we spent just hours drinking coffee and talking. It's my favorite thing to do. Yes, but we did get out and about. Yes. So we went to the Plaza Art Fair. Now, every year there's something called the Plaza Art Fair where artists from all over the country bring their art and sell it on the Plaza, which is a famous outdoor mall, we'll call yeah. it, in Kansas City. And you and I never get to go because we're just rarely home that particular weekend. I right. mean, I don't, I don't know the last time we were home that particular weekend. Yeah. So we, you and I walked down to the plaza and I got a t-shirt, Gretch, I'm wearing my t-shirt. Oh, good. I'm standing up so you can see it. Okay. It's large. They only had extra large, so it's quite yeah. big, but I plan to sleep in it. But anyone who's watching on YouTube can enjoy yeah. seeing my Plaza Art Fair t-shirt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and another highlight was we often go for these long walks with our father. And I loved going to Kaufman Gardens because it was like lots of monarch butterflies. And they have a sign. So we knew it was a monarch station. You know, it's one of the places monarch butterflies come. But again, we, we just n never usually get to see it because we're not there at that time of the year. So it was so fun to see. It was so beautifully planted. There were all kinds of flowers. And then at first I didn't, it was funny, I didn't really notice the butterflies. But then we, we were sitting on a bench and you start noticing all the details. And then I was like, there's a butterfly. There's another butterfly. Oh my gosh, there's 50 butterflies. It was fun to see them come. Yes. Yeah, start to notice them. Yeah, we got to see the butterflies. Hard, we realized, to get a picture of multiple butterflies yes. in one shot where they're visible. So, although we tried. I know. I got a lot of good pictures of one butterfly, but you cannot get more than one butterfly. That's next level. And at the art fair, we got to see my friend, Chris Dahlquist, is an artist in Kansas City, and she had her art there, which is so spectacular. If anybody wants to check out Chris's website, Chris Dahlquist. And so I hadn't seen her for a few years. So it was just like fun all around. But, but listen, that was, it was especially funny, I thought, because you had just been talking about how much happiness you got from seeing your old friends from high school. And then it was like, yes. and here's a wall out of the, you know, who would have known? I mean, I guess you could, you actually said, oh, maybe we'll see her here since yeah. it's an art, art fair. But still, you often manifest things, though, Elizabeth. You will say that. You will, you will manifest something in the world. And it does happen. And there it was. I know. I really don't even do it on purpose, and it just keeps happening. It's something. I need to be studied. I know. I, I Yes. Uh, I think that I'm going to make a list of things and have you sit down and concentrate for a little while, and so I can... I, yeah, you can manifest for yourself. Can you manifest for me? I want you to try. I don't I know. I will be your I've guinea been, pig. <laughs> I've been trying to manifest for Sarah um, huh. with less success, but I'm still trying. Okay. So, Gretch, we did, of course, go to Winstead's. Oh, yeah. The first night we were there, oh, yeah. we went to Winstead's. Yeah, um, I've been there like probably 90 minutes before we went to Winstead's. Uh, I know. If that. It was like, yeah. okay, Winstead's. And then how awesome was the Winstead story we heard while we were in town? Yeah, we were walking around the fair. A listener spotted us, recognized us, which was so fun, said hello. We always love it when people say hello. And she told us a fantastic Winstead story. Yeah, she said, so when she and her husband got married, um, they were on the way to their reception and they were worried that because it was, you know, their party, they wouldn't actually get to eat, which is, of course, something we always talk about, how you never eat at your own party. Yeah. And so they went through the drive through of Winstead's. <laughs> um, and she said the people at the drive through saw that she was in a wedding dress. And I think they, maybe in her car, I think she said she had like a little white car and it was probably decorated, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, just or was married. it a convertible, maybe? Like a little white convertible, I think. Maybe. I think that's what she said. Yeah. And she was in her wedding dress. And so they said, Did you just get married? Are you eating Winstead's on your wedding day? Yeah. And so they gave gave them a complimentary dinner. But I just thought that was such a great story. I love Winstead's. And then Gretchen, 
On Twitter, we heard from someone else who went to Winstead's for the first time this weekend. So it's just all oh. over the place. Oh, I mean, it is so unchanging. That's what I love yeah. about it. I love the food and it never changes. I would be too scared to eat Winstead's if I had to worry about a wedding dress, I have to say. It just it just feels very dangerous. So hats off to anybody who can do that. That was my first thought when she said <laughs> right. that. And I what really wish <laughs> we had asked her, did you put something over you? Because I'm yes. dying to know. Yes. Hey, if you are listening, our yeah. listener from Kansas City, yeah. will you yes. email us? Yes. And let us know how yes. you managed to eat Winstead's in your wedding dress and not get dirty. Absolutely. Yes. I would be scared even to have the bag in the car. Agreed. Oh, and you know, one more thing making me happier, Elizabeth, you know, we're coming up on our 400th episode. Yes. How astonishing is that? So exciting. So for the 400th episode, we want to highlight ideas, solutions, hacks from previous episodes. If there's something that you've heard on the show and it's really made a difference in your life, could be something big, could be something little, but just something where you're like, yeah, this is an idea that's made me happier, healthier, more productive, more creative. Let us know. Don't worry about figuring out the episode number. We can figure right. that out. Just because it's a lot, but just let us know because we want to highlight some of the the ideas that we've talked about in the past that seem to have been particularly useful for people. So it's always yes. fun to hear what people put to use. Yes, and I'm sure some will be from like episode one, and and yes. someone else will it'll be from episode three ninety five. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so let us know. Okay, Gretch, coming up, we're going to talk about another city. And it's flowers, but first, this break. Okay, Liz, I know there's, you, you have something that you've been uh, meaning to tell me about flowers. So, you know, I love flowers. What is this flower-related happiness idea? Well, Gretchen, I have been meaning to tell you that I've been having the memory of our podcast live tour. You remember before uh, the pandemic, uh, oh, we yeah. did a whole tour where we did our live show in different cities. Oh, yeah. And... I was remembering that in one of the cities, we encountered something that I think the person told us was called Flower Fridays. And everyone buys yeah. flowers on Friday. We noticed it because we saw all these people walking yes. around with bouquets of flowers. Yes. Often like wrapped in a plain brown paper wrap. Yeah. And I think it was Seattle. Is that right? You know, I can visualize because we just happened to be staying near a farmer's market, sort of an open courtyard that had a lot of little stalls and people were buying flowers there. So I can so visualize that, but I'm not, was it Seattle? I don't know. But we went to so many cities so close together that now I'll remember something, but I won't remember where it was. Well, if someone is in Seattle and they yeah. and you have Flower Fridays, let us know. I was thinking about it because at mom's apartment, there were so many beautiful flowers. Yes. And I thought, oh, it's so nice to have flowers. They yes. look so nice. They bring such joy. Yeah. And then I remembered Flower Fridays. And I mean, that is something that many of us could execute in our lives. We could do Flower Friday. I mean, the thing that we noticed is, first of all, it was so cheerful to see everybody carrying them. It was such like a wonderful yes. citywide thing. I don't know if it was Friday Flowers or Flower Fridays. Either one works, but I can't yeah. remember. Again, if you're if you're listening from this city, tell us. And I'm also reminded of this beautiful quotation from Mae Sarton from her memoir, Plant Dreaming Deep. She said, if someone asks me what my idea of luxury is, I think my answer would be flowers in the house all year round. And I mm. love that. It's, it's an interesting question. Like, what's your idea of luxury? Yeah, but the thing about these, what what we saw people carrying was not hundred dollar arrangements. These were no. modest, cheerful, like the kind of thing you could just put in a simple vase and put in the middle of the kitchen table or next to your desk or you know on a coffee table. Yeah, I'm so happy you reminded me because I'd forgotten that I remembered it. I know, and you and I talked about how we want to try to put this into our own lives, and yeah. then we forgot. Yeah. It's funny. My idea of luxury at a hotel is if they have slippers, not just a oh. robe, but a robe and mm. slippers. And if I've mm. got hotel slippers on, I always feel like I am having a very luxurious time. You no, know, Jamie loves a hotel robe. Like, the minute we get there, he's like, when can I put in my robe? That's and he just, me. Yeah, no, I... 
I am. I will often leave without having put on the robe, but not Jamie. Jamie loves the hotel robe. No. So yeah, we want to know more about Friday flowers or Flower Fridays, whatever they're called, wherever they happen. Whoever does it, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> Me too. Bill, do you think we're too much underbuyers to do this? I mean, but you live in California. Are there like flowers blooming that you could just cut in your yard? You don't really have that kind of plants. I don't have that. Ki- Other people do. Yeah. Um, not that I would obviously cut flowers from someone else's <laughs> yard, but I know a lot of people who do. That'd be nice. You know, there are definitely flowers at all of the grocery stores as there are in New York, I believe. Yes. That's one of the fun things about New York is there's always like flowers out for sale. Um, Are we too much of underbuyers? That is a very good question. And it goes to those, there are those people who think flowers are something one should spend money on. And there are those who think flowers are not something one should spend money on because they die quickly. So... It's definitely a mindset. I believe that flowers are something that one should spend money on, but then I never do. Right. No, and it's because of my five senses book. Eleanor said, oh, I think you should go into a big flower phase because flowers are everything. You know, see, hear, smell, taste, touch. And I was like, you're right. I love flowers. They're wonderful. They're beautiful. They're mysterious. They're transcendent. The colors, the smells. I love them. I love them. I love them. But then I just somehow never buy them. Mm -hmm. Well, we should push ourselves. We should push ourselves. Okay. Yes. Flower Fridays. <laughs> okay, Gretchen, it is time for our spotlight on a tool. Yes. And so the spotlight on the tool is a free tool. It's one of mine. It is my five things making me happier newsletter. I spend a lot of time on this newsletter. I try to pack it full of things that are interesting and fun and make me happier and I love it. I, I have so much fun creating it. Well, I love it, Gretchen. I think I've said on the podcast, what I love is that I feel like I know everything you're up to. I feel like I'm completely in on your life and what's happening. And yeah, whenever I read this, I'm like, oh, Gretchen went to this exhibit. Oh, I didn't know Gretchen got a new white t-shirt. Oh, I, I learn new things and often things I'm very interested in. Well, it's funny because you would think, how is there anything you don't know already? I, and yet, I, yeah. I think that until I see the five things. But also because of all the subjects that I follow, I come across the most extraordinary articles. Remember the one about the snow monkeys in the hot, yes. in the hot springs? And I mean, I just find these things and I'm like, oh my gosh, if I didn't have an outlet to share them <laughs> in some official way, I would just burst. Your family would be... A- inundated if I know, you do right. not have this newsletter. You know, yes, I would definitely become one of those people who's like, read this. Yeah, yes. yeah, for your amusement. Yeah, so anyway, there I, I carefully craft it. And then it's got a links to a lot of other stuff too. And a lot of people click at a lot of things. So I, it's a great form to connect with people. And how can people sign up for it? If you go to GretchenRubin.com slash newsletter, you can sign up there and then all, and it's free, of course, and you can unsubscribe anytime so you can check it out. But you could also sign up there as you go through to the moment of happiness because so many listeners love quotations the way I love quotations. So the five things making me happy is like an outlet for a certain kind of thing, but then I love my quotations. So then I have to have an outlet for those. And then more happier is an outlet for those too. So yeah, so the five things making me happier newsletter. I'll put a link in the show notes. Okay, Gretch, coming up, we have a question about shoes. I have been meaning to ask you this question. There's things I've been meaning to tell you and things I've been meaning to ask you. Okay. But first, this break. Okay, Elizabeth, what is what do you want to ask me about shoes? I have many thoughts about shoes. Uh, just okay. spoiler alert. What do you what's your question? Well, Gretchen, I actually know the answer for you for this question, but I'm curious about the question in general. Mm -hmm. It's really about shoes. There are those who want to wear shoes and those (laughs) who don't. The question is, which are you and why? So I do happen to know that you are a shoe wearer. I love to. I wear shoes morning, noon, and night. I I want to wear shoes. I rarely even, like, my slippers are kind of like moccasins, so they're almost Uh like indoor shoes. And even those, I often just wear my regular shoes. How about you? And I am one of those people who does not want to wear shoes. I never wear shoes at home. But you you don't go barefoot, though, do you? 
No, I wear either socks or mm. flip flops, which I sort of consider slippers. Mm. I have mm. a certain oh, pair that I wear only at home. I don't wear them out. Okay. I mean, I wear them in the yard, but I don't wear them out in the world. Or I wear actual UGG slippers. Mm. And anytime it's cold enough, I will have on my UGG slippers, which I also wear at the office when I have an office. I keep slippers at the office so that I can change out of not my high heels, but like my running shoes into slippers. So even running shoes, it's like, I can't even wear jeans. I've got to be in yoga pants. It's like, I yes. can't even wear running shoes. I have to wear slippers. Okay. So here's my question. So if you were wearing, let's say you were wearing running shoes, okay. you would come home and you would take them off, and then you would change into what you said. It's an interesting question of whether flip-flops are a shoe or they are a slipper. I guess it depends on if you wear them out of the house, then I guess they become a shoe. <laughs> yes. But if we wear them only in the house, then they are essentially a slipper. Right. Although I will say, usually I'm wearing socks or actual slippers. The flip-flops okay, is kind of a late, uh, late summer when it's really hot. I then go to the flip-flops. I don't know if you know this about me, Elizabeth, but I can't wear anything between my toes. So I can I've never wear flip flops and I cannot. That. Yeah, I can't wear any kind of sandal, any kind of shoe that goes below between my toes. It just makes me bonkers. Really hurts. And I think because I never do it, I get blisters. Right. So I never would wear flip flops. But it's funny because the shoe thing, it doesn't translate to like a type, you're a type A and therefore you must wear shoes. Like Adam, my husband, I don't consider him type A. Mm -hmm. But the minute he wakes up in the morning, yeah. he gets dressed and puts on shoes. Whereas yeah. I wear my robe, like I must have robe time. I must get mm -hmm. up and have yeah. robe and slipper or socks, whatever time before I get dressed. Now, I wonder how people feel about this as related to hygiene, because I think a lot of people, even if you wanted to wear shoes, they would have indoor shoes that never went outside and outside shoes that went outside. So I have to confess that I wear my shoes in my apartment, which I know some people find they, they would never do that. Yes. But I do. Nobody else in my family does. They all take off their shoes, but, but not because that's our policy, just because, I don't know, they just do. Yeah, I ours has nothing to do, I must say, with hygiene. Because again, like Adam wears his running shoes 24-7. So Well, we also have dogs. So we've got we got our dogs right. are tracking everything in. So yes. yeah. As long as you have a dog in the house, yeah, that stuff's coming inside for sure. But I do think for many people they they tie it or, or maybe it's like they don't want to vacuum up the dirt or whatever. It's tied to that. But yeah. so it's sort of like, do you wear shoes? Inside, do you wear non-shoes inside? And if you do wear shoes inside, do you have inside shoes and outside <laughs> shoes? Yeah, you see, there's a lot here. Oh my gosh, there's some for the varieties of human experience. Yeah, but you're right, it doesn't really tell us anything more. Like, I like to clear clutter a lot, but I don't mind the idea of outdoor shoes in the house. Whereas I think some people who are who might be visually messy might be very turned off by the idea of someone wearing shoes in the house. Yes. But I feel as long as I have on shoes, I can't be truly relaxed. Oh, interesting. Now, for instance, as we record this, I do not have on shoes. And I, I do. Socks. I'm going to show you my shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah. See? And I'm wearing my... Uh, I'm wearing socks. Oh, you're wearing Bombas, socks. My mom yeah. does socks. So there you go. But here, okay, so there's research that I read for what it's worth. I mean, I don't put a huge amount of weight on just one study. And I've never been able to find this study again, or I've never really looked, but I've never, I've never run across it again, which, as I recall, it was like a study of grad students. And it said that people who put on their shoes every day made more progress on their PhD theses than the people who did Amazing. it. And I'm like, that's correlation without causation. But I do think for a lot of people, and then this is maybe like a work from home thing, that there is a certain kind of like suiting up mm -hmm. or transitioning from my robe time or my pajamas into work. Some people want to do this. Some people don't. I absolutely do that. I, I, it would never even occur to me. I, I, because again, I change the minute I get up. Now, I will say exception to this, Gretchen, is if I'm on my treadmill desk, then uh, I do well, wear yeah. shoes 
on my treadmill desk, and I absolutely cannot do the treadmill desk not in shoes. It just feels okay. too bizarre to me. So, so it's not even safety. It's like it just doesn't feel right. It just feels wrong. Yeah. Okay. So I don't yeah. know. It's interesting. I mean, it's interesting to me at least. Well, it reminds me of our question about is there a mall in your life? It's one of these things like <laughs> – does it is it that significant? No, it's just kind of interesting to think about it and talk about it. Like I could imagine yeah. having a very animated conversation with many friends about people feel strongly. They feel strongly. Yeah. About their malls and about their shoes. Yeah. Okay, Gretchen, what is our quotation this week? Okay. This comes from the autobiography of Bertrand Russell. He's writing about his childhood. In solitude, I used to wander about the garden, alternately collecting bird's eggs and meditating on the flight of time. If I may judge by my own recollections, the important and formative impressions of childhood rise to consciousness only in fugitive moments in the midst of childish occupations and are never mentioned to adults. I think periods of browsing during which no occupation is imposed from without are important in youth because they give time for the formation of these apparently fugitive, but really vital impressions. Mm, Nice. So, Elizabeth, are you feeling more happier? Yes, I am feeling more happier. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. Get in touch. Gretchen's on Twitter at Gretchen Rubin, and I'm at Elizabeth Craft. Our email address is podcast at GretchenRubin.com. And for everything related to this episode, links, photos, and more, go to happiercast.com. Bye, Gretch. Bye, Elizabeth. The best time to start a happiness project is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Gretch, I, th- I think one thing that I like about the idea of the flowers is I feel like you're, it gives you the sense of living in a movie or something if you're walking around carrying flowers. Yes, it does. It's very cinematic and romantic and glamorous. Yes. Even As simple would say, flowers. So movie. Yeah. So movie. Like having a baguette in your in your bicycle basket. <laughs> exactly. If you're watching us here on YouTube, please hit subscribe under the video. It really helps other people to enjoy our show. From the Onward Project.